Good day, everyone. We are here with the new head coach of the NLJHL, Hearst Lumberjacks, Mark LaFleur. How are you today, Mark? Very well. Thank you, Jay. Um, thanks for taking the time out of your schedule to talk to us. The first question is, um, if you were to spend time reflect, I guess, say, reflecting back on the last five season, seasons in Kirkland Lake with a record of 183, 68, 10, and 13 in the NLJ, NLJHL championships that you built, what, what goes through your mind? Well, I mean, you know, for the past five years, it's been one great experience here in Kirkland Lake, um, you know, for, for a lot of reasons. Uh, you, you know, winning the championship also is something very special. Being uh, being able to ice a, a, an extremely competitive team pretty much every year as well in, in small town, Northern Ontario, uh, it is very difficult, but we we're able to do it. So uh, in great part due as well to the to my amazing staff um, from the ground up, for the, you know, I, it, they were as much part of this as I was. So uh, I, I thank for their service for the last five years as well. I mean, they were... They were, they were spot on. They were terrific. They really helped out. And, you know, I talk about this, but uh, everybody will talk about the championship that we won, get to the semifinals of the Dudley and whatnot. Probably the biggest achievement that we're proud is having won the uh, Kirk and Lake Citizens of the Year that we were uh, named uh, a few years back which had been, uh, at the time, the first sports team in Kirk Lake to be, to be given that honor. So th those are the, the little details, some of the details that people tend to forget. And, and the thing is, is uh, like, with, with you being in Kirk Lake for five years, uh, what made you decide to take over the Lumberjacks? And like you say, coming into a community of only 5,000 people, what made you decide to, to go to Hearst? <laughs> Well, the first thing, and I want to make it clear, it had nothing to do against the. Uh, it had nothing to do with with the gold miners organization. Great organization. Um, again, coming back from the ground up, not only with the staff, but I mean with the ownership group, the volunteers in Kirkland Lake. Great hockey town. Uh, and, and essentially, what happened is, first got the team. And at first, uh, I was I was still very reluctant to leave Kirk and Lake. Uh, again, we've established something for five years, a uh, good foundation. But Hearst did come calling. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I, I get to go home, see my dad, uh, spend time with my dad as well, my family. And, and once home comes calling, you know, you, you tend to listen to them. And knowing Hearst and knowing how Hearst is, in terms of a, a hockey community, I mean, it is really tough to say no. Yeah, everybody, if anybody knows Northern Ontario hockey and they know Hearst, they know that it ranks right up there with any other community that they can think of in terms of, of being hockey mad. And like you say, it seems that the community of Hearst like say, has already embraced it. Like 400 season tickets as of May 15th. What does that say about the hockey, yeah. hockey culture in uh, Hearst? Yeah, well, see, I was actually there. We, we, we opened up our ticket booth at the trade show this past weekend. And uh, it's funny, quite a few people said that we had the busiest, uh, the busiest uh, booth at the trade show. So, um, but from the get-go, even when rumors are swirling that Hurts could possibly get a hockey team, a lot of people back home were talking about it. And from what I'm told, the moment it became official, um, I mean, everybody jumped on board. But, but again, that's Hearst. If I mean, if you're from Hearst it, or, or you know Hearst, it, like it doesn't come as a surprise. That's that's the bottom line. People are people are very passionate about their game, about their hockey. Now the thing is, is now with with Hearst getting a team and Airco Falls losing a team, will you be bringing some of the players over? Well, that's you know what that remains to be seen. Um, there, there are quite a few. Uh, veterans that can come back but but Jay in our league and a lot of times in small town uh, communities some people may like to go to school so some of the players some of them you know it may may want to stay home and, and at the same time listen we have to be we have to be honest here as well um the team didn't do so well in the standings last year in the regular season so as a coaching staff we're going to have to look at each at each individual off that team that can come back. And we have to decide as well whether whether we want to make the invite or not. So, so it's a two-way street. Some players may like to stay home. Some players 
uh, may want to come over, and, and we have to look to see what's the what's going to be the best fit for her. We want to build a winner right away, which means that we have to properly evaluate the players that can come back right now. And though and those that who will be who will be making the jump to Hurst, um, I mean, I'll tell you right now, the tighten that chin strap, tighten those skates hard because you're in for a wild ride in Hurst. And and then that's where I, I've been in the north since '91, not growing up here, but being in the north since '91 and knowing the reputation of Hurst and the, your style of coaching. It's uh, what can the lumberjack fans expect uh, in the fall of uh, of 2017 on opening day? Gritty, hard-working team. Uh, at the end of the day, we want we want our team identity. We want to be relentless off the puck, to be a great puck pursuit team. That's what we're looking for, and, and a team that's going to battle every night, um, win the one on ones. So, I mean, yes, obviously you want to have the skill, you, you want to have the size and strength, but ultimately we want to see results and when we say results we want to see guys come out of the scrums with the puck and guys that are able to execute when we do have the puck so for for next season what what are your goals again you're moving home so what are your goals for the team and personally when you go back to Hearst well i mean personally the wins take care of themselves as a coach you just have to look if you want to progress in this in this business you can't look. You can't look down the road too much. You got to look at tomorrow. You got to look at tomorrow's practice. Get the team ready for the next game. And in terms of team goals, bottom line is we want to win right now. I mean, if my goal isn't to win a championship this coming year, then what am I saying to the players that are coming coming over and committing to this? Exactly. So, 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 so those that those that know me know full well that I'm not going to hurt to build the winner in three or four years. It's like, it's started already now for the last couple of weeks. And with, and when you mentioned about Hearst and the community, you're so well known nationally. You, you've you coached, uh, uh, like you say, with the level at the, the junior A challenge and stuff like that. When the, it comes to the hockey community and you, with chances, the other jobs at a higher level, why have you decided to stay in the NOJHL? I, I think the NOJHL, is not only a league that is on the rise, but it's also a league where, I mean, player development, coach development, everybody's progressing. Take a look at the league six, seven years ago and take a look at it now. It's night and day in terms of, uh, in terms of the recruiting, in terms of the skill level, in terms of the, 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 the compete level out of the teams. So why wouldn't you want to be part of something that is on the rise? Exactly, and you're helping. And you're helping. I don't want to say kids, but the young men to become uh, better hockey players, and hopefully be able to move them on to the next level. Of play. Yeah, 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 it's a two-way street. You know what? They're coming over. They are helping our league, our image, uh, with how they're playing and how they're conducting themselves. And in return, again, the last couple of years, our league has uh, demonstrated that we can definitely move some kids up to the next levels, whether it be major, junior, or down south in the states. And and when you brought up about being a different mindset with hers being only 5,000 people and young guys today having so many opportunities, how do you, how do you attract players to like say Hearst being a smaller community? Well, Hearst is a little bigger than 5,000, but um, I, I truly believe kids, the kids that are, that want to compete, the kids that are competitive, the kids that want to go to the next level and want to improve. It doesn't matter if they go to a town of seven or eight thousand, or they go to a town of seventy or a city of seven or eighty thousand. At the end of the day, they want to go somewhere in a program that is structured and are there to help them advance. I truly believe those are the truly competitive kids. They don't care where they go, as long as it's somewhere where they become a better hockey player at the end of their experience and have and have options open for them. And that's exactly it. Like I, I was, I was talking to somebody yesterday who's been involved in the league in the past, and and it's not against the Thunderbirds or against Race at Bell for in Sudbury, but when you go to these smaller communities, it's there where Sudbury and the Sioux, you have the Greyhounds and you have the Wolves, and when you go to Hearst or Timmins or 
or um, uh, Cochran. They're they're the talk of the town. They're the big dogs. So it's something. It also helps the kids when it comes to that too, right? Well, if kids kids want to go into now again. They want to go somewhere where there's a good atmosphere. And, and if you're going to go to a game, and, and and you have place packed, it makes it that much more special to play. So, so coming back to that, I think you're right with the small towns. There is an advantage in that way. You can find advantages in big cities, obviously, as well. But ultimately, at the end, the kid who is competitive and who has goals will go somewhere where he knows a program will help him advance, no matter what, how, what or how big the, the size of the town or city is. Mm-hmm. I, I don't care what people say, the kids that are truly competitive. And it, want want to associate themselves with success, and and that and I'll be honest, that shows with your record with over five years, one hundred eighty three wins and sixty eight losses. It shows you've had success in Kirkland Lake, and now you've taken it to her. So it, I'm saying it should should help when it comes uh, in September. Thank you, appreciate it, Jay. I hope you're right. So, <laughs> well, th- thank you very much, and hopefully we can talk uh, maybe the first uh, week or two into the season, and we'll talk again. Thanks, Jay. Thank Have you. a good one. Bye-bye. Bye bye.